Hey there, this is Will Marshall at Permine in San Francisco. Today, I'm gonna to be giving you some quick tips on how to get really cracking, punchy uh, hip hop snare sounds. So I'm gonna show you a few different techniques and try and give you an understanding of the underlying theory for what we're doing in terms of processing to get the sound we want. Uh, what I'm gonna to do to start with is go into my sample library, go to hits, snares, and let's find, I want for this, this example, a kind of real sounding, um, snare samples. So if we say, not the acoustic ones, let's go for hip hop, and I've got this set called Organic. Let's take this one. We're gonna zoom in on it, and we're gonna look at the snare sound and see what it looks like. Let's just uh, loop this section here. Now, it's not by any means a bad snare right now. In fact, this has been well compressed and well processed. It's very punchy. But what I want to do is give it more of a whip cracking sound. There's a few different ways I can go about this. Um, the most important thing when you're dealing with snares, and to an extent uh, uh, kicks and other percussion, is that the first kind of 40 or 50 milliseconds of the sound, the transient or the attack, is where the sense of volume tends to come from. The, the kind of overall volume shape tends to be a kind of very loud transient followed by a rapid volume drop off afterwards. And kind of the faster that volume decay or that volume drop off, the more uh, cracky this snare sounds. If you have a, a longer one, it tends to sound more kind of punchy and long. Um, there's a sweet spot that will dial in with our ears. And so what I like to do when I'm processing this kind of stuff is actually use digital clipping in Ableton. If we bring open the saturator, put the saturator in, you see it defaults to digital clip mode for me. Uh, and what this is doing is uh, digital clipping is basically a form of limiting where it squares off your sine waves. Your sine waves kind of get to the maximum of zero dB and then just get cut off. It turns them into square waves. Now, this is definitely a form of distortion and digital clipping many sounds sounds uh, terrible, but with a snare, uh, adding that little additional layer of distortion can often actually improve the snare tone. And you know, even at worst, it doesn't typically ruin the snare by any means because there's such a, an intrinsically noisy sound to begin with. So digital clipping for drum processing is something I do all the time. Now, the way we want to do this is uh, our saturator shows us the kind of zero point and this line here. And we just want to drive um, the snare until it starts to break up and then turn it back down a bit. And then we're going to use the output to gain match it. So the peak level of the snare is the same with the saturator on or off. So let's do that quickly. That's uh, peaking a little much. So where does it peak with this off? Negative 0.1, and here it peaks two, so basically three. So we'll turn it down by three, uh, negative 3.1, that will bring it close enough. Yeah, so now it's very much the same volume. So if we listen here, right, we have much punchier sound. If I freeze and flatten that snare, you can kind of see what it's done here. It's actually squared off the initial transients of the uh, snare sound, and it's boosted this whole section of the snare here. So right now, the snare is punchier, it's bigger, but it sounds a little worse to me because this whole kind of tail of the snare has been pushed up in volume. Um, so what I'm gonna do is pop open Native Instruments Transient Master and pull down the sustain. What that will do is let me dial in the kind of, uh, the balance, the level uh, ratio I want between this section here and this section here. And I'm actually gonna shortcut that before using Transient Designer by um, slicing this clip separately. I'm gonna kind of move the start point to, that's what I wanna do. I wanna slice it there. At the start of this loud section, you can see how it gets louder there. And I'm actually just gonna turn that down myself and listen to make sure it's not popping. See how that tightens it up? You can just edit sections of a waveform manually. It's a good habit to get in. And then, turn down the sustain, maybe turn up the attack a lot. So, if I uh, freeze and flatten that again, you can see how the waveform 
is very pushed here. You can see that that square wave, that uh, digital clipping is really obvious. And then it kind of fades away pretty rapidly to give us a very tight sounding kind of whiplash crack uh, snare drum sample. So to A-B that, just you can see uh, the difference. This is our original snare sample here. Uh, we'll play that for you. And here is our processed snare sample. You can hear our process sample is kind of more aggressive and shorter. It has more punch and less body. Um, very appropriate for some styles of music. Obviously not what you always want to do. Now, this approach, I really love using the uh, digital clipping, using Saturator. Um, it introduces distortion, which is something I personally tend to do a lot of. Like, I, I prefer my sounds to be a little dirty, that's just kind of the way I roll. There's another way of doing this that I uh, found that uh, gives a cleaner result. Basically, what we can do, I'll just collapse that and I mute it, is use just Native Instruments um, Transient Designer. So we'll just... Uh, Drag this to the start there, perfect. Uh, if we pull open Transient Master, you'll see that the Transient Master has a limiter. Um, and this limiter is designed to be really a clean and sound really good on fast drum samples. Uh, I've tried using, say, the native Ableton limiter to uh, get some results where I push the sound into the Ableton limiter to try and kind of brick wall or square off the start of my uh, drum sound. And for whatever reason, it just doesn't sound nearly as good as the limiter built in here. And so what we can do with Transient Master is super simple. If you kind of put the, push the attack up, it's turning up the volume of this section of the drum sound, and then it's gonna hit it into the limiter, and the limiter is gonna square off the start of the drum sound for us in a very effortless kind of way. And then we can use the sustain control to give us uh, kind of that shorter, tighter transient sound. So if we freeze and flatten that, you can see we've got two very different waveforms uh, out of these two techniques. Our uh, saturation, like our digital clipping technique, that clipping thickens up the overall body of the uh, uh, snare sound as well, so it gives it a rougher edge, which may be what we're going for. Whereas using the Native Instruments uh, Transient Master, we kind of square off this very neatly, but all we do to the uh, body of the sound is turn it down, so the kind of original sound of the body of the snare is uh, retained. So those are the two techniques I use. Uh, you can do pretty much the uh, same thing using any tools. There are lots of limiters where you can just kind of push the sound into the limiter. Um, there are other transient shapers, other transient designers available. But this is a, a quick and very handy technique to get kind of very punchy, very tight snare sounds. Thank you. If you're a music producer, subscribe to our channel and stay up to date on the latest PureMind tutorial videos, track breakdowns, elite sessions, and more. Visit us at PureMind.com.